So I, absolutely it's possible uh, to prevent and reverse heart disease, no question. And <clears throat> our own research, that of Dr. Dean Ornish, that of Dr. Robert Osfeld, and uh, many others who really have now shown by scientific publications in the peer-reviewed scientific literature that we can take patients <clears throat> who are seriously ill with heart disease. They've been told nothing further can be done. No more drugs, no more procedures. They can absolutely stop the disease and begin to reverse their symptoms when they go to a whole food plant-based nutrition. Now, it doesn't work if somebody says, well, I'm 85% there or I'm 90% there. No, because I think it's, it's probably important if we've got a moment, I wanna just spend on where all experts agree that where this disease has its inception and its onset and its beginning is when we progressively injure that innermost lining of the artery, the endothelium, which is the absolute life jacket and guardian of our blood vessels. And what makes it so remarkable is it produces a marvelous molecule of gas, nitric oxide, which has a number, a number of truly remarkable functions. Nitric oxide for us always keeps our cellular elements in our bloodstream flowing smoothly like Teflon rather than Velcro. It keeps things from getting sticky. Number two, nitric oxide is the strongest blood vessel dilator in the body. When you climb stairs, the arteries to your heart, to your legs, they widen, they dilate, that's nitric oxide. Number three, <clears throat> nitric oxide keeps the wall of the artery from becoming thickened, stiff, or inflamed, protects us from getting high blood pressure or hypertension. Number four, this is the key, a plentiful normal amount of nitric oxide will protect you from ever developing blockages or plaque. So literally everybody on the planet, whether they are from Chicago, Berlin, London, New York, Melville, Long Island, wherever they develop their cardiovascular disease, it's because by now in their life, in the preceding decades, they have so sufficiently trashed, injured, and compromised the capacity of their endothelial cells to make nitric oxide, they simply don't have enough to protect themselves from making these blockages and plaque. Now the good news here though is that this is not a malignancy. This is a benign foodborne illness. I've often said coronary artery heart disease is nothing more than a toothless paper tiger that need never ever exist. And if it does exist, it need never ever progress. This is a completely benign foodborne illness. Now, the exciting thing is that once you can get patients to stop ever eating again any of these foods that are going to injure the capacity of their endothelial cells to make nitric oxide, then their endothelial cells recover. You make enough nitric oxide so that you can absolutely halt disease progression and begin to get disease reversal. Now, what are those foods? that every time you eat them, <laughs> you injure the endothelial cells. Any drop of oil, olive oil, corn oil, soybean oil, safflower oil, sunflower oil, coconut oil, palm oil, oil in a cracker, <clears throat> oil in a piece of bread, oil in a salad dressing. Oil injures endothelial cells, as does anything with a mother or a face. Meat, fish, chicken, fowl, turkey, eggs, and anything that is dairy, milk, cream, butter, cheese, ice cream, and yogurt, and any excess of sugary drinks, Pepsis, Cokes, Diet Colas, cakes, pies, cookies, stevia, agave, excesses of maple syrup, molasses, and honey. So if you eliminate these foods that are going to injure you, what are you gonna eat? You're gonna eat all these marvelous whole grains for your cereal bread and pasta and bagels and rolls, 101 different types of legumes, lentils and beans, 
all those marvelous red, yellow, and green leafy vegetables and white potatoes, especially sweet potatoes, and some fruit. Uh, now, there's one other wrinkle here that we've added in the last six and a half years, and that is that if I can get a patient to uh, imagine, if they could get their heart, excuse me, <laughs> if they could get their head inside the artery to the heart that is diseased, they would see that that is an absolute cauldron of oxidative inflammation. So we need antioxidants. No, do not go down to the health food store and buy a jug of pills that says antioxidant because it doesn't work and it's going to be uh, harmful. So you're going to get your antioxidants from food. Fair enough. What food? Food that is high in what we call ORAC value, O-R-A-C, oxygen radical absorptive capacity. So if you're having raspberries, blueberries, strawberries, and blackberries on your morning oat cereal, terrific. But nothing can trump the antioxidant value of green leafy vegetables. So I want these patients seriously ill with heart disease to start chewing, chewing a green leafy vegetable six times a day after it has first been boiled in water, five and a half to six minutes, so it's nice and tender. And then you must anoint it with several drops of a delightful balsamic vinegar. Why? Because the acetic acid in the vinegar has been shown to restore the nitric oxide synthase enzyme contained within the endothelial cell that is responsible for making nitric oxide. So you're going to chew this alongside your breakfast cereal, again as a mid-morning snack, again with your luncheon sandwich, that's three, mid-afternoon, four, dinner time, five, and I adore it when you have that evening snack of kale. What are you doing? All day long you are absolutely basking and bathing that horrible oxidative cauldron of inflammation with nature's most powerful antioxidants. Now, what are the green leafy vegetables that I'm talking about? They are bok choy, Swiss chard, kale, collards, collard green, beet greens, mustard green, turnip greens, napa cabbage, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, cauliflower, cilantro, parsley, spinach, and arugula and asparagus. And the top six are kale, Swiss chard, spinach, arugula, beet greens, and beets. And that's how you halt and reverse heart disease. It's not 90%, it's not 95%. That's not my program. It's 100%. Think of it this way. If you have the disease because you have so destroyed your endothelial capacity to make nitric oxide, why would you ever, 5 or 10% of the time, continue to try to further destroy the endothelial capacity to make nitric oxide to have another second heart attack. Makes no sense. And what are you doing? You're exchanging one pile of delicious food. The Western diet is no question. It looks delicious. It smells delicious. It tastes delicious. And it is painless while it is injuring you. And you exchange that for whole food plant-based nutrition, which looks delicious smells delicious, tastes delicious, and is absolutely enhancing your health. Now, people will say, how am I going to get my protein? What? There is protein in grain. There is protein in beans. There's protein in vegetables. There's, I mean, there's protein in potatoes. You're not going to be deficient in protein. Increasingly, professional athletes like uh, Kyrie Irving for the Celtics, plant-based. Why? Just like the 11 members of the Titan football team. Going plant-based, why? Greater stamina, quicker recovery time. Pretty exciting. Strongest man on the planet, Babudian, a German, lifts 1,200 pounds. <laughs> what? Plant-based. Well, I think the, uh, the best data there would be 
of the earlier studies of Dr. William Costelli, who for many years was the director of the world famous Framingham study. And in that, this is a community outside of Boston. In all those years, I think he had said that nobody who regularly appeared with a cholesterol of 150 or under had cardiovascular disease. And my own uh, biased feeling here is that, that in addition, those are people who had very little in the way of uh, inflammation. And if you get the combination of people who are happening to be eating whole food, plant-based nutrition, they not only will they usually to lower their cholesterol, but more, most important of all, whole food, plant-based nutrition <clears throat> is the, one of the strongest anti-inflammatory maneuvers that you can possibly do. I mean, when you're eating whole food, plant-based nutrition, your white blood cell count, which is a, normally in Americans is five to 10,000. You, if you're plant-based, it may suddenly drop to 2,500 or 3,000. Your doctors will start scratching your head, worrying if something's going wrong. No, the inflammation has left your body and it plummets. Same thing happens to your HDL cholesterol. As you start eating whole food, plant-based nutrition, your HDL cholesterol falls. Why? Because your liver is somehow, the message has gotten to your liver that as the inflammation is leaving your body, <clears throat> you need less of this highly anti-inflammatory HDL molecule.